So uh, how are you, Pete? I got excited. Sorry, I had to jump in. That's okay. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Yourself? I am good. Uh, uh, this is the first time ever we're doing these kind of webinars, so it's like... Uh, I wouldn't say it's stressful, but you know, when technique doesn't work like it did with tune, it's actually like, oh my goodness, how long time does it <laughs> before you get going with things, right? So uh, from 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 that perspective, it's a little uh, stressful, but I think it's really, uh, you know, I I love my work because this week I have like three hours every day where I can learn from all the skilled people that we have invited for this uh, learn with us session, and that is the purpose of it. And um, yeah, you're in the best I seat. sorry what. You're in the best seat. I'm in the best seat because you have to work when you're not doing the presentation, so you can't you can't participate all the time, at least, right? So, did you listen into a little bit about the tools presentation? Yeah, mm -hmm. very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Um, it's a, a kind lot of funny of that we see as well. Yeah, because it's kind of funny because it seems that uh, Belgium is the place where it comes to software and automation these days, right? Well, it's it's been like that since the 80s, I think. Uh, we had a, a really renowned uh, polytechnic school that was specialized in graphics. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of these companies, you know, the artworks and the, the Barco graphics and all these guys hailed from those schools and worked very closely together with those schools. So mm -hmm. it was very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, for people that don't know who you are, you are Pete Segman from uh, Chili Publish. Uh, and uh, you're going to talk a little bit about uh, templating and web to print, isn't that great? Exactly. Yeah. So okay. Chili Publisher is a, an online editing solution that um, simplifies and automates how graphics are made by turning graphic documents into smart templates. Mm -hmm. And these smart templates can then be given to end users and they can create their own graphics online without any help. And we guarantee that what comes out is repro ready. You can set constraints, you can set document intelligence, you can make the, the, the templates very, very intelligent, and you can connect them to data. Mm -hmm. um, similar to what Tom was saying before, we also believe that data is the future, so we make sure that uh, our users can connect their things to data. Mm. One of the things uh, I also spoke to your colleague Cindy about in one of our old Skype sessions was the fantastic thing from uh, your use of it in Berlin, uh, the spicy talks, because all the marketing that you pushed on LinkedIn and, and social media in general, that was made by using uh, a lot of smart templates in order to different size. I, I think that in your presentation, you even calculated how many different versions. It was like thousands of versions, wasn't it? Well, you know, there's there's different there's different schools of thought. Um, a number of us had presentations with calculations in them, and we were all like into the hundreds. Um, we didn't know. We didn't. We really didn't know. We were so focused on print only that we said, well, you know, the only variance that there is is maybe like a flavor change for a product or like a, a language change. But once you start digital and you got, you know, Google requires a certain amount of sizes, like vertical and, and horizontal um, um, banners and stuff like that. Um, it gets really interesting because LinkedIn needs a number of sizes. Facebook needs a number of sizes. Um, Google Display Network needs a number of sizes. If you want to run a digital campaign and you want to generate graphics, you you literally need hundreds and hundreds of them. And the first thing we thought is like, who builds these? And when we did the research, a lot of people are still building them by hand or paying an agency to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, that's nuts. Um, that actually led to us developing a, a new block of features that you saw in, uh, in Berlin called the layouts. Mm -hmm. um, what the layouts do is they make it simpler to build all these different variants uh, from from uh, from a single template, because we allow um, things to be calculated based on relative values, like you would use in a simple Excel formula. So mm -hmm. instead of saying, "Well, here's an object, and this object will be positioned like X or Y millimeters from the top," we'll say, "Well, we'll we'll change the size, position, and rotation of that element based on the kind of document you need. Is it for mm -hmm. print? Is it for digital? What's the size of it?" What's the display size of it? And you can make one template super intelligent like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, exciting times. Uh, back to watch this space, we're, we're about to release it to the open market. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a little preview. Like I said, I got excited. I can't shut Yeah, up. I can hear that. So what I suggest us to do now is that you did your presentation pre-recorded. So uh, we don't have those technical issues to take care of. So I suggest that we uh, shoot it off and then uh, we take a chat afterwards. Maybe there's some questions and see uh, so should I just start your presentation? Yeah, if you would, yes, thank you. I click it now. So just mute your microphone and then uh, talk to you when it's finished.
Let's talk about Web to Print strategy with Smart Templates. Now, the current state, as we know, is that customers are becoming more and more demanding. It doesn't look like that's going to change in the future. Now, one of the things we notice is a shift in customer expectations. Um, over the years, millions of e-commerce sites have experimented with like maximizing conversion. And as the site builders have shared their findings online, there's a certain pattern of expectations that has emerged, like a way of organizing the buyer journey. So the buyer wants to find a supplier, right? That's SEO. They want to find your product on the website easily. They want to be able to quickly select and customize these projects. Um, and then they want to complete the transaction with ease of payment, known payment platforms. They don't want to enter, enter their credit card details all the time. Um, and if you do, if you get all that right, you can start cultivating a long-term relationship with the customer. What's important here is that the customer journey has to be frictionless. Any friction at all will hurt your sales. People will abandon their carts. They'll just stop using your platform. They won't leave their customer data, their contact data. And you, you have to have a frictionless experience if you want to have any chance of high completion rates. Another thing we've seen is that B2C sets the norm. Your customers expect intuitive interfaces, the same kind of interfaces they know on their favorite devices, ranging from their smartphones to, your, to their cars and their dishwashers. Um, and they've lost any kind of inclination to tolerate bad user experiences. I'm a Gen Xer, so I remember bad interfaces and being forced to use them when I was like an Apple user trying to do telebanking or when I was at a company that chose SAP and Salesforce with their initial interfaces. And it was okay to just force that on the public. But millennials who are entering the workforce now, they've never even seen a bad interface. So they're less likely to put up with that. And the B2C user experience kind of sets the norm as to what is expected. Another factor is that people demand instant gratification. People have gotten used to seeing instant results, right? Even something as, as trivial as, as a load time for your page can really have an impact on how your website performs. And all these powerful web apps, they've set the standard for interactivity. What you see is what you get. It used to be a selling point for earlier generations of word processors, but today it's the norm. Users will, will really dismiss kind of any application that doesn't feature true what you see is what you get. And this is significant for printers who want to offer editing and customization on their e-commerce site. It has to be fast, it has to be interactive, and it has to show results accurately and in real time. So this current situation brings with it a number of challenges and meeting these new higher customer expectations puts an additional burden on web to print suppliers. Now the first part of the challenge is transaction won't cut it anymore. Uh, you remember the first step in web to print e-commerce was really simple. It was all about transactional uh, and users were responsible for creating a file that could go directly on the digital press as it was. And creating these repro files, of course, was too complicated for those with no training. But the customer didn't care about that. You as a printer had to clean up and fix and optimize these files, taking out all the RGBs, making sure the resolution was high enough, going back and forth with the customer a couple of times. The challenge there is that it was really difficult to get paid for that kind of work. The customer had said, well, I've uploaded my file. My job is done. So as a printer, it's really difficult to spend the time fixing those files and still make any money. The second challenge is that offering online editing is really difficult. So customers have become more self-reliant when editing and customizing. They really want to do that by themselves in the browser. And it makes it really difficult to, to integrate like a good editor in an e-commerce portal. A lot of people have tried building one and have burnt their fingers. A lot of people have bought one and figured out that afterwards that the decision was not as they expected because the editor wasn't uh, powerful enough. If you look around in the market, most of the editors are either too basic or too difficult to integrate. It's really difficult to find a good, capable editor. An editor that has constraints, that gives permissions to what can be edited and how, that are not binary, just yes or no, you can edit, and that make these templates really flexible. And a lot of these editors are difficult to integrate, and they're dependent on server infrastructure that's kind of old-fashioned and aging by now. And the third part of the challenge is that 
customers want personalized products and platforms. Now, customers expect a lot more than a straightforward order processing will let them do just that. And often they'll only require minor edits between orders and customers expect to be able to, to make those modifications themselves and to preview their results accurately. Many of these B2B customers expect to have their private environment, sometimes branded to fit their own identity uh, with no shared resources between environments. For printers, that means a regular e-commerce website that allows customers to place orders and make an online payment is incapable of meeting these customer expectations. As a printer, you need full control over what the, the customer experiences and that includes the editing and customization part. But given the current state and given the challenges, there's also a huge opportunity. In fact, smart choices today can influence your business results tomorrow. The first part of the opportunity is that you can future-proof your portal. Now, a lot of printers have already looked into offering online editing capabilities on their portals, and actually a large number of them have already invested in technology that provides browser-based editing in some form, sometimes because it was included or because it was available in the e-commerce front end. But this bundle technology can often not really keep up with rising customer expectations. And when you evaluate these past investments and you consider new ones, there's a huge opportunity there. Now, first of all, the right editor can future-proof your existing portal. It needs to offer all of the features customers are likely to expect going forward. And we should consider feature parity with the desktop application a minimum requirement. So it needs to be at least as good as a typical software that your customer is used to using on his desktop. Secondly, a good editor can fit into an existing infrastructure so that all of your initial investment can be protected. You don't have to start from scratch. Uh, your portal has to be up and running, right? So future-proofing really shouldn't mean starting over. And finally, editing technology can enable business strategies, different ones at the same time even. Now, if you have a solution with flexible pricing, you can make that available to your customers as a SaaS, as a private cloud, and different models depending on their customer preferences, depending on their business strategy and depending on yours. So a wise choice today will pay off dividends down the road. Also, we can make it easier to buy. Having an excellent e-commerce portal by itself leads to revenue, we all know that. But editing technology can have a business impact in new ways. By adding these customizable and personalized products to your mix, customers are likely to purchase more and you can offer more. For example, if you have a nationwide or an international company, you can concentrate all of its business into your portal with a single supplier capable of fulfilling the requirements for all of the locations rather than using local suppliers all over the place. If you have a good editor that offers like a really good middle road between free design and fixed documents, it eliminates the need for review cycles and it puts the responsibility for the content with the customer. So there's no more of that fixing of files. So providing the better buyer experiences helps visitors become repeat customers and purchase more different products from a single trusted supplier. So if you have like, okay, I need something for print, by the way, would you like to buy these add-ons, which could be digital files for Facebook campaigns. So editing technology can really enable upselling. And finally, there's scale. Now, once you have a clear plan in place about how you're gonna strengthen the supplier customer relationship, scaling is the path to quick growth. With your business proposition that's tested and validated by your initial customers, a really good templating solution allows printers to expand quickly. The technology architecture of a really robust editor will allow its owners to add environments by replicating existing accounts with minimal effort. And most of the work is really relegated to creating the initial templates. So the marginal cost and the marginal effort for setting up an additional environment is really close to zero. A really cool case study that we have is Dotit, who they're a Chili Publish user catering to the restaurant business. Uh, they no longer do demos with prototypes. They no longer use wireframes. In fact, when they visit a potential new customer, they bring a working fully functional environment. It's that quick to set up. If you want to know more, just uh, hang on. There's more information coming at the end. Let's conclude. Customers are more demanding than ever, and there's little to no difference in B2B or B2C expectations. Previous attempts at offering robust online editing have proven that it can become a challenging thing for printers to be successful. Now, making the right choice when you select an online editor for your web to print portal opens up a world of possibilities. The right choice lets you focus on what you're good at, running an effective and efficient operation. 
flexible technology architecture has to allow for hassle-free SaaS or private cloud, depending on your business model and your personal preferences. The solution has to fit well into your existing infrastructure. It has to be able to scale up or down and easily respond to market conditions. This session was brought to you by Chili Publish. We simplify and automate your graphics. Chili Publisher is a, a browser-based online editor that has a lot of different features and it's really easy to use. The first thing we do is we simplify graphics. When using Chili Publisher plus its smart templates, any user can use the browser to make output for digital and print. And we can put in constraints and document intelligence to make sure that these templates protect a certain brand or protect a certain style or protect a certain quality level that you need for your file to be produced while giving very targeted freedoms to an end user. The second thing we do is we automate. So we connect to a bunch of different systems like product information management systems or digital asset management systems or CRM systems or any kind of data source you have. We can connect those to the smart templates, which means that they're auto-populated and you no longer have to put in text or product information in those templates. And we also make it possible to generate many different variants. So if you have online and print and packaging requirements for a certain product that exists in three flavors, that is a bunch of different files you have to generate and we can generate those automatically. So what are the next steps? How can you learn more? First of all, we have some resources available on chilipublish.com. We have a case study about mycreativeshop.com, a very small organization that makes most of its money creating and curating templates for people and not really printing. Uh, the second one we have is the case study by Dotit you know, that works with the restaurant industry and that no longer uses demo files to go demo. They actually bring a working environment to the customer. We also have a recorded webinar with them. They, they were a speaker at our event. And we recorded that and, and broadcast it as a webinar. That webinar is available on the website. So if you want all of those, you can contact me directly or you can go on the website. But there's an exclusive for attendees as well. Now, we've written out the content that you've seen today in a business report. It's called Web to Print Strategy for 2020. And if you want it, it's exclusively available for attendees of this session. All you have to do is send me an email at pete at chilipublish.com. That's P-I-E-T at chili-publish.com. And send me the secret passphrase, which is Inkish Rocks. And I'll send you the resources that we talked about um, and the Web to Print Strategy for 2020. And that pretty much wraps it up for me. So if there's any questions. Wow. Um, every time I will do a presentation in the future, I will say that chili publish rocks. That well, will be my you. secret password. <laughs> um, you know, I am uh, always jealous of you, Pete. Why is that? Because you you are you are from Belgium, so you, obviously you speak your local language. You have a perfect English, and then I also heard that you did an interview with my colleague in Germany, also in German. So you, I mean, you're just a master. I watch too much television. <laughs> too much television, yeah. Um, I think that I have. I'm sorry, I have to ask you because I have an ever recurring question every time I talk to you or to. Uh, Fabian or to Kevin or to Maya or to Cindy is that why don't Chili Publish already rules the world? Because I, I mean, every time I see the things that you present, I see the way that you do things. It's always like this is the this is the premium car, and of course somebody can't afford to pay the premium car. That I, I understand, but when you look at what you are offering and the way that you also see the opportunities in the market, it seems that 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 it's so complex so sometimes it can be difficult to get the message across and i know that you're master in communication and, and you're very good at it but i'm just wondering what is the what is the what is the biggest obstacle in your opinion to get that message across because every time i see something it's just like wow yeah well there's, there's two components to to the problem i think the one component that you talked about earlier is, is pricing um, and in fact, we have tackled that. Uh, we've launched a new pricing. So if you have like your, your, you know, your fancy car, your big expensive car, um, you no longer have to buy it now. There's actually a rental leasing formula now, which makes it way more available for smaller organizations. 
um, to, to get into Chili Publisher, we've effectively taken away that price uh, uh, problem. Um, we made it just way more affordable. We scale on the number of renders, so as you use it more, your, your, your licensing fee goes up, and it's, it's very, very easy to get started uh, today. So that's one of the problems that we looked at. The other problem that you mentioned is more difficult because when when we see this and people like you and I and, and, and a handful of customers that are frankly at the forefront of techn technical and technological evolution, um, it makes immediate sense to us, right? Because that's, that's how we're wired. We want to play with the new stuff. Um, but what we're doing in the wider market is we are challenging the status quo. I've been thinking about this a lot because, you know, we, we see the traction, we see the reaction, and then you say, how is it possible that, 90, that not 95% of the, the market has, has bought Chili Publisher yet? And what we're actually doing is we're coming in with something that makes a lot of sense to us. This is clearly a, a much more way to do things. You have large customers, you know, like Airbus that, that see that in a worldwide theater, it just saves them lots and lots of money. There's, a, there's a, an example from the American Cancer Society that, uh, that went from 2,000 uh, hours of work prepping graphics to 117. That's not a small CD. That's not 5 or 10%. But what we are challenging is the way things have always been. Mm. So don't forget, since the 80s, since the invention of desktop publishing, we've mm. all done the same things in the same way. Number one, we used specialized tools. Mm. Number two, it was all manual labor. And it needed specialists that were trained in these tools. Back in the day, I still have a dongle somewhere in, in, in my closet behind me from Quark 332. Right? And I remember the learning curve for that program was, was kind of steep. Same thing for like the Barco LW bricks or for um, um, InDesign. Um, so that was two. Number one, it was like it was uh, manual work. Number uh, two, it was a special tool. And, and um, it's also. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. Uh, there were three components to my answer: um, specialized tools, the way things, the way things always were. Um, and it just in, involved a lot of checking and a lot of manual work, um, and people have gotten used to that. So if we come in and say everything you've been doing, you can now stop doing, that's like too much of a step for some companies. And the companies that have made that step, there's two types. There's one company that just says, okay, I'm going to reinvent myself. And this can be a really small company like Impress Spiegel or, or like uh, Microsoft Shop. Or it can be a juggernaut like Coca-Cola. Uh, they just say, we're going to stop doing things. We've just seen the numbers and it doesn't make sense anymore. And the other type of company are the companies that, that know that they have to change or that they're going to lose their customer base. Uh, so it's either because they really want to reinvent themselves or because they have to reinvent themselves. Mm. But what we've done is we've always done things the same way. We've positioned things the same way. And this links back to the dynamic layouts. We've always said, well, if an object's on a canvas, a page or a digital canvas, it's always measured from the top left and the number of meters or uh, pixels. Um, and we've stopped doing that. And when, it, when I first saw this, you were there in Berlin. I told Bill and Kevin, our two founders, I, I said, we're gonna change the world with this. Like this is the thing that's gonna change the game because we now position things differently to other people. We make it possible to create extremely complex um, uh, and extremely efficient templates with very little effort. What mm. used to take what? like a half a day, it would take like 20 minutes to build now. Yeah. One of the things that I also, I mean, I, I have, I acknowledge what you're saying. I like also that you're, you're offering uh, Chile as a SaaS solution. Um, I think that maybe one of the things that I was thinking of is because you have a very comprehensive API. So basically you are the online editor that connects to any commerce system. And, and um, basically uh, what you also showed in, uh, in, uh, in Berlin was that you were connecting now to other e-commerce systems. You were connecting to a DAM system. You were connecting to PIM system. You were, I mean, there's a lot of ways to integrate Chile publish, uh, publisher into uh, other uh, IT solutions, would you say that one thing is that when you see things that are so great, and I know that you have also made some ready-made uh, integrations to DAM system because you can see that how important it is for brand owners to be able to integrate with, with the, the uh, I wouldn't say the market leaders, but, but you know, everything, but you start from somewhere, right? <laughs> and um, I was just wondering, do you think that maybe one of the issues, is, I, I remember when I started working with the internet many years ago, 
-hmm. I remember we bought an Oracle database for the company I used to work in. And it was like you paid an awful lot of money and then at that time you got a, a CD and installed it on a computer and then you said, okay, where's my database? Where's my database? And it was like, hmm, it was not like FileMaker where you could see something, right? It was just something that was in the computer, right? And I was just wondering, is Chile uh, also kind of, because uh, I think you have moved away from that, but are you, you're the infrastructure you at, at two times ago from uh, spicy talk you you spoke about the the uge as as uh, as something that was like the universal graphics engine where you had like all the thing that was more like infrastructure but i think people like to have the shiny metal polish on the car and and you know uh, get nothing is, is that is that part of the, the 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 challenge to make sure that you get away from that kind of image kind of thing? It, it is, it is. We, we typically were a solution that was uh, loved and appreciated by geeks. Um, <laughs> once, once, if you have a, like a complex sale, I did sales for Chile for a long time. And if you walked into a meeting and there were technical people there, the, the implementers. They would buy it right away, right? <laughs> that was it. It was like, it was over, right? They'd seen the yeah. other things, they, they know the API. But an API for a lot of people, especially decision makers, an API is a very abstract thing. So what we're doing now is we still have the API, of course. We, we've modernized it. It's all space, and so it's all there. The, the techies will still be there. But we are publishing and developing some things in the background that will make it easier to make it a turnkey solution. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure how I much. Think that, this I think that's a good idea. idea. I think that's a good idea. Right. So I'm not <laughs> gonna I'm not gonna disclose too much because I'm not sure how much of it I can I can say. But mm. there will be a, a basic front end that will make Chile Publisher like a standalone platform for brand owners where you don't mm -hmm. have to integrate it anymore. You can just say, well, use a single sign-on that I have from the, whatever system I'm, I'm using, and you'll now have a portal that will give people access to the Chile Publisher templates. Um, Great. Does, it doesn't do any, any more than that, right? It's not an e-commerce thing. Um, we'll see what happens with it. We'll see if we develop it further. So that's, that's on the user side. We're putting the big shiny um, metal sheen on uh, on things to make it not API exclusive. Mm -hmm. But we're going further than that because as you mentioned before, Chili Publisher can be used by e-commerce platforms as an entity through the, uh, through the API, but the API can also use external data sources. An external data source can be something as simple as an Excel sheet, or it can be a live connection to a product information management system, or it can be a uh, DAM or any kind of system that you come with. And for those as well, we're working on ready to use turnkey integrations that we will develop, that we will own, and that we will maintain with a couple of major platforms. I can't name names yet, but uh, the platforms that we keep bumping into where a customer goes, well, we've got XYZ as a DAM system, um, wouldn't it be great if this were integrated? And we, we used to go, well, here's our partner network, and mm -hmm. you can find a good integrator. Now we'll be able to say, well, listen, we have an onboard integration for these. We'll start with a handful, the most important ones that are either as far as market volume are important or as far as strategic importance or because we have a long-standing good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And then as the, as the demand evolves, we'll probably add to that. So, but those mm -hmm. are two things that are in the works. So I can't give you an ETA for it, but... Uh, no, no, no. That's, that's cool. Um, and uh, that extends to... Uh, also a question I always ask uh, you guys is uh, because, I mean, I understand that the UI becomes easier and, uh, and the applications that can come out of Chile uh, instantly is, is uh, of course, interesting. But you are also addressing both brand owners and printing companies and owners of other IT systems. And, and I mean, so so the, the if you look at it from, from a printer's perspective, because English is mainly for printing companies, I would say, I think that maybe just to, to clarify it is like, okay, if you have, if you have an online editor in, in an existing web to print solution, you typically have one UI for all your customers. With Chile, you can basically have one UI for every customer. That is different, right? So, so you can say that you can utilize a UI that is specifically for customer A because they are not so skilled. And then you can have a, another one that is for the very advanced customers in a way so they, they can easily yeah. adapt these, uh, the, the technology behind uh, behind uh, Chile uh, for the customer application. So so when they compare now with, with the, the SaaS solution that you're offering, that basically means that first of all, the entrance point 
financially is is way lower. With the UI, you're basically giving people more options to to deliver something that is out of the box experience. And then on top of that, you have all the capabilities of building solutions that are specifically tailored for each customer you have. That should be a very, very attractive value proposition for a printing company. Yes, in, in, in two different ways, really. So as you mentioned, we have different uh, UIs that we can use, and we can do that per user or per individual document. Even. We can make the UI different depending on which user opens which document. Like a marketing wow. manager can only select this country done, whereas... Just sign the, the, the check. <laughs> exactly. Like, just select the country and sign the check. Whereas the marketing manager, <laughs> if she's there, she can go in and, and go into a lot more detail and, and, and customize a lot more. So the, the interface that we have, we begin with an interface that have, has everything. It has all the bells and whistles that we know from InDesign, for example, and more. And then we start switching off things that certain users don't need. Um, so we can go very, very granular. That's one really good point for printers. Um, however, the thing that we didn't really think about until we started looking at digital is that there is a potential for upsell. Because oh, yeah. a lot of printers um, are still making their money with margin of putting ink on paper. So there's still a company that's engaged in physics and chemistry. Really. Whereas the, the most modern printers are content companies. Mm -hmm. They manage and curate content for their customers and they happen to print it or they happen to send it to another printer if it's geographically more interesting. Where, where it gets interesting now is that those same templates can be used to generate uh, different assets for online. Mm. So think you know, Facebook backgrounds, Facebook ads, banners, all those kinds of things. You can generate those with the same type of template. Once you do that, you make a connection to your customer. You become the vendor of choice because as a printer, I shouldn't call you a printer anymore, uh, but as a supplier, uh, you now own all of the deliverables that the customer needs for print, for digital, for whatever they need, for large formats, for whatever they need. Um, and that creates a very stable long-term solution because once you've got the customer locked in with the templates, they're very reluctant to leave because they know that if they leave, they will lose functionality and they will lose flexibility. Mm. That is uh, awesome. Pete, um, final word here from my side, and you're welcome to add uh, anything you like, uh, is um, uh, we, have been, uh, we have been with you guys at uh, your Spicy Talk user events uh, two times, once in Amsterdam and once in Berlin. And um, uh, as I said to Cindy as well, I think that you are among those companies that produces the best or develops the best uh, user conferences that I have been at, uh, because you have you have technical tracks, you have business tracks, and you open up for partners also to come and showcase how you work together with them. Is that something, let's say that that I'm watching uh, this or other films and I'm interested in this, is these user events also open for non-customers or, or how does that work? Well, it's open for non-customers, absolutely. Okay. There's, there's Go a number of tracks that you can use, all the business tracks, for example, most of them you can find on our website. Yeah. Um, the technical tracks um, are less relevant for cost, for non-customers. Sure, so they're yeah, of course, they're yeah. part of the customer success approach. Yeah. And they'll, they're part of that whole Chile Publish Academy that customers can use to learn more about the product. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a lot of uh, open things. We have two webinars that just went out from the customer success team. Yeah. One on I can see, yeah, because I can see Maya, she just wrote here. Uh, that uh, JavaScript rules. So that was a, an extension to Pete's uh, <laughs> appreciation of Java. And then she says that Chili Publish will be uploading this free webinar recording on our expert uh, JavaScript sessions in the coming days. We'll share on LinkedIn and on our website. So that is like a, that is like very cool. Uh, and, and, and the reason why I was mentioning uh, uh, Spicy Talk as event, and also you refer to the as, as uh, uh, recordings on your website, is because I think that you know, talking to other users uh, is uh, always a very inspirational thing, but also to see the case stories behind some of the su successes. I You referred to both uh, Airbus and to uh, the Cancer Association, and uh, there was uh, actually also the, the Belgium Post, and uh, uh, there was like a supermarket chain that was really using Chile to an extent where I think that, that uh, some of the uh, suppliers to uh, uh, these types of companies and organizations across, uh, at least in Europe anyway, easily uh, could 
you know, identify the, the value of, of where you can bring some really interesting thing to it. How um, how do people get in touch with you guys? Is that, uh, on, of course, on your website, thing like that, but do you, do you also have like local people working uh, sell as resellers or uh, consultants or how does it work? Yeah, so we've got a pretty extensive ecosystem. Uh, so we've got our own feet on the ground, of course, where the CVS network goes in all the major regions that are active. Uh, we've got a number of, uh, of partners that do integration services, that do distribution services. Um, so we're pretty much all over. The best, the best starting point, of course, is the website. We will then route that to the, to the correct people. Um, but yeah, so I think it's important for us to keep banging the drum, uh, so to speak. And, and you do that good, I must say. What we're good at. Um, and actually, you mentioned Maya earlier. Maya is kind of the voice of the, of the, com of the company. You know, she, she kind of um, directs the tone and engages with the press. And she also builds a lot of the spicy stars. So all of the customer testimonials that we mentioned are available on the website. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if customers want to learn more, they're fairly available. You can just uh, browse and delete that stuff in your email address. They should, uh, so and we have, resources. Hmm. and we have also uh, recorded some customer sessions with you from uh, Printing United last year. Uh, so I will push these both on English and uh, uh, LinkedIn again. I think uh, you have a great example with, I uh, can't remember his name, but a guy from the US who's doing like photo books for schools and things that I, was, I think was great. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that was like, you know, he, it was like, it was not like a webinar, it was like more like a session where we were recording him and, and could have been better technical quality, but you know, we we all get better with H, I guess, right? <laughs> He's hoping. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping. <laughs> Pete, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you here on uh, Learn With Us. Uh, appreciate your time. I appreciate your insights and your always uh, positive attitude. And I look forward to see you in person soon, I hope. So uh, thank you very much for your time and all the best. Thank you so much for having us. If there's uh, any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or visit us on the website. And hope to see you soon, everybody. And remember to send the mail to Pete with Inkish Rocks, at least so he knows that we have, uh, I mean, this is a new format for us. So we never know if it's just like one or two or five that will send you the email. But send, say hi to Pete for me, okay? <laughs> All the best. <laughs> thank you.